Madam President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to address the Conference on Disarmament once again on the important topic of gender equality. I commend the Colombian Presidency for taking the initiative to build on the work and discussions held under the previous presidencies of the conference by soliciting further discussion and understanding of this issue. In the UN Secretary General's report, Our Common Agenda, he remarked that women's equal leadership, economic inclusion, and gender balanced decision making are simply better for everyone, men and women alike. He also called for women and girls to be at the center of a new agenda for peace, addressing our new and emerging challenges. Today, International Women's Day offers a perfect opportunity for us to consider how we can contribute to these objectives. As I have often said, ensuring gender equality in disarmament, non-proliferation and arms control issues is not only the right thing to do, but also the smart thing to do. I believe that the Conference on Disarmament has a key role and can make significant contributions in two ways, through supporting the equal, full and effective participation and leadership of women and by incorporating gender dimensions in its work. First, on women's leadership and participation. In taking stock of the progress the disarmament community has made, much attention has revolved around the equal, full and effective participation of women and men in disarmament processes. Increasingly, member states have recognized the importance of gender equality and have committed to ensuring gender balance in their delegations. However, we have much further to go to reach true parity across our disarmament processes, including this conference. In most international disarmament meetings, only about one third of delegates are women. Even fewer are heads of delegation. We must consider how we can accelerate progress to reach our goals in this regard, including through target setting and other matrix. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, seats at the table are not the only way we should be working towards gender equality. We must also focus our attention to the consideration of the gender dimensions of disarmament, non-proliferation and arms control, and to make our work more responsive to these aspects. These discussions are both necessary and overdue. I urge the conference to consider gender equality not as an additional topic for discussion, but as a fundamental aspect of each and every item on the CD's agenda. This also requires a careful consideration of other intersectional factors that affect one's vulnerability to and impact from weapons, which includes age, location, race, and disability. The disproportionate effect of ionizing radiation on women and girls, or the gendered biases in the field of artificial intelligence are but two examples of impacts that ought to be addressed by existing and future disarmament, non-proliferation and arms control instruments. In order to ensure gender responsive disarmament processes, one must first make sure that there is indeed the foundation of knowledge and expertise necessary to guide your efforts. Investing in the expansion of the knowledge base about the gendered impact of weapons is of paramount importance. We must consider not only the quantitative facts, but also the qualitative aspects, 
such as the social dynamics around the production, use, and long-lasting consequences of traditional weapons, such as nuclear weapons, as well as emerging weapons and weapon systems on diverse populations. In this regard, subject matter experts, as well as survivors, civil society, and the private sector must be given a platform to share their expertise and views in forums such as this conference. Equipped with constantly expanding knowledge base, we must then start to systematically engage in gender analysis to inform our decision-making, policies, and programming. Here, I stress that gender analysis must be done systematically. It must be part and parcel of everything that we do and not considered as simply a box to tick or worse yet, optional. When gender analysis is done well, it can further expand and refine not only the mainstreaming of gender into your work, but also uh, elucidate where targeted interventions are necessary. It will make our work on disarmament more effective and support relevant frameworks such as UN Security Council Resolution 1325 and subsequent resolutions on women, peace, and security. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, the Conference on Disarmament and the disarmament community at large must hear from diverse voices and also create solutions that fully consider the needs, experiences, and perspectives of both men and women. We cannot, in good conscience, have a disarmament regime that does not take people-centered approach to peace and security, and we cannot leave gender issues behind. In closing, I encourage the conference to create conditions conducive for equal, full, and effective participation of, of women and systematically introduce a gender dimension into its discussions. Doing so will contribute to the building of disarmament architecture that is fit to address the peace and security challenges of tomorrow and ensure the security of all members of future generations. I wish you a fruitful and engaging discussions today, and I thank you very much for your attention.